Good evening, everyone. I'll call the meeting to order. Anyone's recording? If we can make it known. Thank you. And uh, with us this evening, we have members Mike, Michael King, Mike Baptiste, <coughs> George Barrett serving as chair, and associate member Richard Swenson, as well as town planner Ken Buckland and our peer review engineer, Charlie Rowley. Um, first item of business is meeting minutes, but since we don't have any uh, copies of those here this evening, we'll forego that and move to uh, A&R Map 90, Lot NB1, Cedar Village, Inc., 8 and 10, Old Stagecoach Road, Care of GAF Engineering. You have the floor. I think they said you had the floor. Oh, I don't know if you want to start. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Brian Grady with GAF Engineering. <clears throat> here for the applicant. We're here with the resubmittal of an A&R plan. Uh, what, this, what we're doing, accomplishing with this A&R plan is we're creating a non-buildable parcel A off the rear of the lot and that will be combined with adjacent piece of land. Uh, it's unbuildable, it doesn't have sufficient area or frontage. Uh, the remaining piece of land is a uh, buildable lot. Uh, so we're not creating any new lots here. There is an existing lot. Uh, we're just creating an unbuildable parcel off the rear of it. Uh, the lot that will remain has in excess of 200 feet of frontage it exceeds the 45,000 square feet of area. Uh, so we meet the dimensional requirements uh, for the zoning district. If we could respond to any questions. I guess at this time we'll take it under advisement and rule out at a later date. Thank you. Thank you. Next item is 29-19 Gateway Motors of Wayham LLC Site Plan Review 379 Main Street. I mean, yeah, Main Street, yep. That's, that's the number we just determined was, is that you? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I believe we oh, yeah, requested a continuance. I did see an email on that account. That's Thank correct, you. it's in your file. Yep. Uh, I don't see a suggestion as to continue to win. It says the next planning board meeting. I went too far. I went right past that part. <laughs> Which we had penciled in a workshop for November 4th. Do we want to take that in the workshop? I think we want to keep that as a workshop, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Solely. Sorry. I think we solely want to keep that as a workshop, George. Right. Yep. Next meeting is the 11th, right? Yep. No, the, 11th. the next meeting is 
that's Veterans Day, so there won't be a meeting then, so we'd have to either go to the 25th or if you wanted to meet on the 18th. I probably will not be available on the 18th. I'll be traveling and I can't guarantee I'll be back by 7. But it doesn't prevent you guys from no, we can have all the fun, George. Either, either date works for me, so it really doesn't matter. Much pleasure. Move to the 18th. Might as well. Continue, uh, continue the public hearing to the 18th. I suppose I should open it. Huh? <laughs> I need to read that document. Is there anyone here this evening on that matter? Uh, Gateway Motors, 379 Main Street? No. I will open the hearing. Uh, William Planning Board will hold a public hearing October 21st, 2019, 7 o'clock, room 320, the William Multi Service Center, 48 Marion Road, William Mass. Consider petition 29 19 for site plan review from the requirements of Article 9 and Article 15 of the Wareham Zoning Bylaws to Gateway Motors, Inc. of LLC of Wareham, excuse me. Care of G GAF Engineering, 266 Main Street, Wareham, to seeking to develop the property to serve as a site for the sale of secondhand motor vehicles. Located at 379 Main Street, Wareham, Mass. Assessors map 61, lot 1034 in the Wareham Village 1 Zoning District. And with that, uh, at the request of the applicant, I would look for a motion to continue the public hearing to November 18th at 7 o'clock. Motion to continue to the 18th. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, motion made by Mike King, seconded by Mike Baptiste. Passes in the affirmative. Uh, let's see. Next is the public hearing for a definitive plan for David Mather, Oak Street. Wayham Planning Board will hold a public hearing on October 21st, 2019, in room 320 of the Wayham Multi Service Center, 48 Marion Road. To consider petition 30-19 for a definitive subdivision plan and the requirements of Mass General Laws, Chapter 41, Section 81K and 81GG and the WAM subdivision rules and regulations. To David and Lisa Renee Mather, care of JF Engineering, 266 Main Street, William Mass. Seeking approval of a subdivision of land, Assessors Map 39, Lot M20 located at 24 Oak Street, Wareham, in the R30 Zoning District. All the green cards are correct and correct. accounted for. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the record, my name is Bob Rogers with GAF Engineering, uh, representing David Mather this evening, who Mr. Mather is, uh, is here with me, seated to my left. Uh, this is a, uh, a two-lot definitive subdivision uh, which is uh, it's a follow-up to the preliminary Form B subdivision plan, which was approved by the board at the end of June of this year. Uh, we're taking uh, one parcel, MAP 39, uh, lot M20. It's about a 1.6 acre parcel of land, and we're subdividing it into two lots, uh, which would result in one additional home. Um, there's a separate uh, waiver request letter which was submitted uh, consistent with the waivers which were discussed as part of the preliminary subdivision. Uh, there was a concern at that time about uh, drainage from the new roadway entering Oak Street. So um, if you look at the plan and profile, we've established a, uh, a negative grade at the intersection with Oak Street um, so that uh, the access driveway for the new house 
Um, it drops down off of Oak Street. There's a low point that's established. We've got uh, a drainage trench on either side of the roadway and uh, two leaching, uh, leaching galleys um, close to the intersection. Um, within, there's an equalizer pipe uh, that's been added as well. Uh, so it's a... Uh, It's essentially a 16-foot uh, wide uh, wrap surface uh, roadway to serve the one house, uh, about 250 feet in length. And um, I guess if I would just hit on, uh, hit on the waivers, if I would, this would be a waiver from um, a turnaround, which you would normally have in a larger subdivision. Uh, again, we're just uh, trying to get to one new house lot in the back, so we're requesting a waiver from uh, the turnaround. Um, there is a sewer easement for this lot going across the existing uh, home. And so since that's just a single service four inch pipe, we're requesting that that be uh, 10 foot in width. Uh, we're requesting a waiver from uh, catch basins at 400 foot intervals. Uh, we've basically got uh, two catch basins uh, with leaching galleys at the uh, at the intersection of the road at the at the low point that we're going to establish. Um, we're requesting the stone infiltration trenches in the roadway shoulders. Uh, requesting relief from the what would normally be uh, the paved construction. Um, if this was, would uh, service more homes than what it is. Uh, we're cresting relief from street lights and street trees, sidewalks, and uh, the monuments that we've set are, uh, are capped rebar rather than um, the, the bounds that you would normally require. Um, so th those are the waivers. Um, we did uh, some test pits. Um, at Mr. Raleigh's request, I would have to say I apologize to Mr. Mather and, and to the board. Um, I was not aware um, that we hadn't provided the consultant review fee check, so uh, we, we don't have a report from Mr. Raleigh tonight. That was, that was my uh, error of omission, if you will. Um, so we got to check in, um, and we think we've taken care of... Um, all the concerns which were uh, discussed as part of the preliminary plan approval, um, but it remains to be seen. Uh, so with, with that, I guess I would uh, answer any questions that you would have, Mr. Chairman, or board members. Are you consulted with, with GAF on the design of the drainage <coughs> no, they, at the street? Um, only because um, for the purpose of creating an estimate for the cost of the review, I looked the plan over briefly and I didn't see any test pit information. So I asked uh, uh, Mr. Rogers if they had done any. In the meantime, they did test pits, uh, got the information to me, but that's the extent to which I've had any uh, design construction contact with Mr. Rogers. I have not reviewed the plan. So is that on your agenda to do then? Uh, as soon as I get the authorization. Yeah, again, Mr. Swenson, I, I would take responsibility for that. That's fine. I just want to make sure we know, I know where, where everything's at. To make it official, we've received the check in the office, and so you may begin. You're authorized to do that. Review. Okay. <laughs> without without you, Charlie's you, review. You got ten minutes, Joe. I was just gonna say <laughs> we'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I think. Uh, uh, Charlie's review, how much can we really accomplish? Um, I think. Um, you can. It, is it, I think it's fair to say everything that I've heard so far tonight addresses every issue that we brought up before. I don't see any gaps in terms of what we had asked for um, no, and what... And the what, main concern was just runoff coming down right. the driveway. So I think the, to your point, Michael, we need to see the results of Charlie's work and then we'll be in a position to make a decision. I think one thing you can do is also uh, consider the waivers that are being requested mm -hmm. because you're going to have to go down and make findings on all those waivers. Uh, one of them that jumps out me, with me is the monuments. Um, a rebar with a cap on it, short term might be all right, but to me, long term, it would be a hazard. Uh, is that? All I can picture is the ones they use on construction site with a little rubber cap on it. And yeah, it's you know it's an 18-inch uh, piece of number four rebar with a with a GAF engineering cap on it that's probably up um, three or four inches. But um, if it was the board's pleasure to put concrete bounds in, then we would revise the plans accordingly. Um, I believe the rebars are already set. It's um, but you have no, to have a not, point. They're to not what I envisioned. In other words, they're not a Fall hazard or? Oh, no, no, sir. Um, you know, we tip, put them up enough to be seen and um, so that it doesn't ruin a lawnmower. If, <laughs> but um, yeah. let me see Anything uh, jump out at you? I didn't have any issues with the, any of the waiver requests, um, mainly because the uh, private way being proposed here is is not really anything more than a a, a driveway for for one home, and it could never be anything more than that. So I um, I felt all the waivers were appropriate. I would have to agree. This is a public, ha public hearing, so if anyone wishes to address the board, they, yes, sir, come on forward, come up to the mic and identify yourself. And Can you hear that? Is the green light on? on the yeah. Yes. Okay. My name is Edward Barrett, and I'm a, my wife and I are abutters to this, to this property. And um, at this point, we don't see any objection to whatever is taking place now, especially in regard to the driveway. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, but we would like to review the plans themselves, if, you, if we could take a few minutes to do that or perhaps you could give us a copy this way and I'll pass them back to the other folks. Sure, I have a couple of uh, half size sets of plans, Mr. Chairman. Or if you want a full size one, we have one up here. Or if you, if you prefer a full size. Uh, uh, take the full size one. Yeah, let me take a read. full size. Yeah. yeah. And if, if you don't mind, we're gonna take a couple of minutes and just take a look over this. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you want to go on to your other business right now and just come back to it. How does that work? Well, we more than likely we will be continuing this to our next meeting so we can get our engineering review back 
So if mm -hmm. you'd like to review that at your leisure and yeah. come back to us at that point, I, I'm sure it'd be helpful to the applicant if, if you could let them know any of your concerns, but. Yeah, okay, just a moment, please. Is that all right for you? Frank? Yes. Yeah. Okay, we agreed to do that. If you that. see anything this evening, you catch them before they leave and just maybe yeah. get the question answered. Right, thank you very much. Ed Barron, number 28. Uh, okay, so if there's no other questions of the board or from the public, I would look to continue to November 18th. Do you need a motion to continue to the 18th of November? Second. Motion made by Mike Baptiste, seconded by Mike King. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Three, zero, zero. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Next item is phase two and three endorsement of covenant <laughs> subdivision plan. I guess you didn't collect all the, uh, didn't get all the signatures? No, did I get signatures from Mike? I went in. Came in and signed. I signed. I didn't sign anything. You didn't. Just a clerical yeah. issue. And then we have a minor modification endorsement for Factory 5, 7 and 9 Tow Road. These modified plans came in after the last meeting on uh, October 7th on the uh, decision. Uh, the uh, change was reviewed by, by Charlie and uh, you okayed the, uh, the modification in the drainage that was shown on there. So this is to, uh, so that we have a, an official set of plans. Uh, I'd like you to sign these ones so we know which ones are the uh, are the real deal. Are the real deal? Didn't we sign ones in the past? You have signed some in the past, but at least prior to the <laughs> modification, right? Prior to the minor modification. So you went you went out there. I went out there. Yeah. It's not under construction yet. No, I mean on the drainage, the mod. With a modification of the design. Did you check anything out in the site? Am I missing something? I still haven't seen a signature box. <laughs> there may not be a signature box. All right, yes. I'm sorry, Mr. Chen. I, I can't speak to this if need be. Make sure more than one copy gets signed so I'll have something to inspect. <coughs> <coughs> so we shine the front page or the back page or all of them? If, if they're clipped together, Front's fine by me, but. Front page is fine. It's only I thought papers. the modification was in the back corner where all the rubble was. They found it, they were doing it different. No? 
wrong? Was, and they they made that change. And they moved the red maple tree that was in the back. They moved the, the maple front. tree from the rear to the front. To that naked island. And there were some other things that I asked them to do after I looked at the drainage, because of uh, groundwater considerations, and it was just a yeah. change in the shape from a depth to a width, yeah. and adjusting the elevation on one. Yeah. Uh, and making sure that there was a speck on the pipe. So, all of that was done. Bob, does that have the same date as the old plans? No, no sir. Okay. We, we dated it October 7th. Okay. Looks like maybe a big red stamp that says record plan on it or something. I, I just want to be sure that there's one in the file and then there's, I'll come in and I'll grab an actual file uh, plan that's been signed so that I know when I go out there to look at it that I've got the right one. I don't always get the revised plans and then I go out there with a plan that's out of date. So. Master plan review, is that just a placeholder? Yeah. There was one thing I wanted to, I haven't looked to see if it was included in there, and that is uh, to encourage the use of existing structures. I don't remember that phrase at all. Yeah. Ken, did one, one plan get signed? Yes, only one copy here. I will give you an update, though, on the uh, on the Congress proposal, uh, which I consider all the you know, I consider the master plan and the Congress That's proposal, great. you know, very very much wow. linked. Um, I did talk to the Conservation Commission a couple of weeks ago and presented the Congress proposal. Um, didn't get any real feedback at that time, but I got a lot of heads nodding up and down, so I, it wasn't negatively received at all. Um, I'm presenting it to the Board of Selectmen tomorrow. Um, I'll be going to the Finance Committee. I'll be scheduling that with them once town meeting's over. Um, they're pretty busy, um, I guess, with the town meeting stuff they have to do. So it's moving. My only message is I'm moving along a little, a little slower than I thought I might, but it's busy time right now. So concurrently, we're, we're going to finishing up our, our review and our next meeting's on the 4th. So... All in all, good stuff. yeah, move it along. No, I, I just suggest that based on the amount of turmoil, the destruction of several historic properties in town has created. I think we should speak to it being in favor of preserving some of our history. Encourage. Mm. Kind of like closing the door after the horse got out, but. <laughs> and uh, maybe uh, as part of the Congress, you can check in with the uh, Historic Commission and the Historic District Commission. Uh, that's my goal. Get the Historic Commission and um, the Historic Commission and the Red Redevelopment Authority put their head in the Conservation Commission to all sit down together and come up with a plan. Will this be a cage match? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll try it once. <laughs> You'll be able to tell by the bruising how yeah, successful yeah. you are. Like I, I, like I tell them all, you know, I'm going to probably crash and burn here in about six months, but it'll be fun watching me do it, right? So <laughs> Permit fees. I saw your email and I was trying to interpret. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, it, it actually doesn't affect this board as much as the, as the Board of Appeals, but I thought I'd bring it up with this board as well, too, because of uh, smaller size projects having to go through a fairly extensive review 
and costly review. Uh, what happens is that there's the tendency to maybe not go through that process and build without a permit. Uh, what we want to do is encourage people to go through the legal process and have the uh, and and, and uh, get all their entitlements in place. Um, there's a set fee for the the uh, application, the publication in the newspaper, and the uh, the abutters notices that go out. And the one item that we can affect or change is the application fee. So what I thought we, we could talk about is a graduated fee where it's less costly for the smaller projects. The, the one that's most common that, that uh, we hear about is somebody trying to put a deck or, or uh, some structure, a small structure on the back of their house in a, in, on a pre-existing non-conforming structure or a lot and or a lot. And with the, uh, the requirement for a survey of the property, the butters notices, we're not saving them a lot of money, but I thought maybe with a, a smaller scale project, if it was less than $5,000 worth of, of value as determined by the building department, that the fee associated with it would not be $300, but would be more appropriate as a $25. Can I, can I ask a question? So I, I read your email and I understood what you said, and I, but, but what I, one thing I was unclear on, I had a shed put on my property, $1,500 shed, that's what, exactly what it cost. And I had a $50 fee for my permit. Very proud that I actually got a permit, by the way. So <laughs> that, was, that was a building permit, correct? A building permit to put right, my not shed. A, not a zoning compliance permit. No, just a, just a building permit. Right. I didn't need anything else. Right. And, and that's because I was in a conforming lot. Correct. So, my, so I, that's what I figured. So, so if we have situations where people with non-conforming lots, which automatically mean they're going to the ZBA, right? Right, pretty much. Why don't we change our zoning so that they only have to pay the $50 fee like I did? Well, it's not the zoning, it's the rules and regulations that actually uh, control the fee that's, a, that's decided on. But, I mean, they, right now they have to go through the whole abutters process and the survey. If, if they were to need some relief, like if they couldn't get the required setback, right. uh, you know, even if it was a non-conforming lot, if you could still meet the setbacks and things of that nature, you could, well, you well, could go I, with just a building permit. I guess, well, one, one of the, the reason is that there are requirements in the state law that we can't change that say there's a, a, a proper notification of the public that comes along with it that says you have to notify all the abutters within, and abutters to abutters within 300 feet. When you're doing when you're going through one of these zoning compliance permits. And you have to have publication in a newspaper or I, general I, circulation. I, I get all that, but we can't change our zoning so that anybody could put a shed on their property even if they're in a grandfathered lot that's now considered non-conforming? Yes, we could. We could say that the coverage requirements don't apply to the small lots. I, one of the things that we've done in the, reg, in the zoning regulations is to try to provide relief to these smaller lots that we know are non-conforming and will never be conforming to, to modern standards. And we've, we've tried to give a de minimis uh, standard in the, uh, in the zoning bylaws and uh, set criteria on smaller size lots on setbacks and the requirements for, uh, for coverage. But there's still... We, we, we can't catch everything or else we'd be doing. I hear you. I mean, I am 100% on board of, with the goal to, one, if we're going to approve it anyway, let's make it as simple and easy as we can on the homeowner, right? And we can do it through a fee structure change or we can do it through a zoning change or both, 
you know, and I, and I know you're working hard to try to make these non-conforming lots easier, uh, for, you know, and get the paperwork off the ZBA's desk, for example. Well, it's not all non-conforming lots because there's there's some non-conformities that you want to control. And you want to make sure you do. Sure. But somebody putting an 800 square foot deck on the back of their house, that has to go through an expensive zoning re review is probably going to be less inclined to get a permit to get a permit even if it's only know that feeling <laughs> what's the fee now ken the fee is three hundred dollars rather than attach the fee to the cost of the work which can vary all over the place why not attach it to the size of the project and it isn't always just a shed it's sometimes a setback you know, off the property boundary, somebody wants to put on a deck. When I read the variance notices in the weekly, a lot of them are for somebody wants to put on a deck or they want to replace a deck or something like that. Decks aren't typically very big, but if you had a minimum fee for something, say, under a thousand square feet of, of area, maybe it's uh, less than 500 square feet, whatever number you want to make it, it doesn't matter what the cost is then because it can, it can uh, vary all over the place depending on the details of the of the actual construction why not make it tied to the size of the project that's an option as well mm. if it's 300 make it 100 you got 150 for something under 500 square feet of mod modification or whatever just use a simple calculator x number of, of dollars per square foot of project whether it be a shed or a or a deck so if I'm if I'm an onset, did you say frontage? No, square square feet of it's the project. Yeah, coverage. Okay. Yeah, I thought you said frontage. I was, I couldn't connect that. If if I'm in onset village and I've got a, a non-conforming lot, but I've got enough room in the back to to put a deck on, but I'm going to have to go get a variance to do it. Um, what's it going to cost me? I mean, instead of the fifty-dollar building permit fee, it's going to cost me. A well, it'll, it'll cost you that fifty-dollar permit fee. Sure. For you're going to have to get a building permit after you've gone through the you're zoning right. review. The zoning review is going to cost you about a thousand for a uh, survey, if you don't have one already. Um, Eighty dollars for the newspaper advertisement that has to be done in twice, two weeks before, at least two weeks before the hearing. And the abutters notices, which vary by the number of abutters, but typically we'd, we'd probably see uh, 20, 25 or so, and, and a little bit over $6 a, uh, for the return receipt and the certified mail. A couple hundred bucks there. A couple hundred bucks there. And then the fee on top of that of, of uh, 300 You're closing in on $2,000 for a... Yeah. Uh, to get a, a clearance to put a shed on a piece of property? No, he's just going to put it up. He's just going to put it to up. To arrange $500 worth of lumber. <laughs> so all of those things stay in place, but we can control that $300 fee. Is that what I'm hearing? You can control the, uh, the impact of the, uh, of the regulation on smaller size projects as well. Doesn't sound like you're going to really be affecting a lot of change if the only thing that you're reducing is the fee. It, it sounds like the, the, all the peripherals are going to stay in place. The thousand dollar survey fee. Yeah. How many people typically have us um, would re be required to get a survey? Do you know? Would you guess? Almost uh, everybody. Yeah, I'd say ninety-eight percent. Really? Yeah. Because, because how else are you going to know the conformance with zoning if you don't have the survey? He's, especially with these small lots where you're dealing with setbacks at a minimum to start with, and they're asking for a three-foot variance. If you don't know where the lot line is, you can't tell whether or not it's going to be three feet or five feet or one foot. And some of these places, especially Onset Village, it's difficult to establish where the lot lines are in there. Um, I always used to define stuff off of uh, West Central Avenue because I knew that there was bounding that was done there years ago. Uh, but over the years, uh, monuments have disappeared. They've either been uh, damaged, taken out by God knows who, and not replaced. So it's becoming more and more difficult all the time to establish where those boundaries are. But it's essential if you're going to know what the setbacks are supposed to be and whether or not there's any compliance after the building permit mm. has been issued and the work is done. 
if this conservation commission required, uh, normally they want an as-built plan so that they can then issue their certificate of completion for the project. Um, ZBA sometimes requires that, they don't always, but they almost always require a site plan to know what the setbacks are and what you propose to do. Three acre lot up in Shangri-La, you might be in the middle of it and it's obvious that you're not anywhere near the boundaries so they may say, yeah, we don't need it. But someplace like Onset, okay, Indian Mount Beach, Swifts Beach, Pinehurst, any of these small areas, it's very tough to know exactly where you are unless you've got an established site plan. Mortgage plot plans don't do the trick. That was where I was going. I was going to ask you that when the meeting was over. <laughs> <laughs> they're not worth the paper they're written on. Good to know. <laughs> they might be for the bank, but for everything else, nothing. Okay. All right. So where do you want to go with this, Ken? Uh, well, I want to get your, your uh, direction as to uh, whether you want to change the, uh, the fee schedule. And if not, maybe there's another way to uh, approach this that we can talk about. Well, I think that's a good point. Do it on a square foot of area rather than value. Yeah, I like that better too. Yeah, because values are kind of arbitrary. If you build it yourself, you're gonna put the, lit, the materials cost, and if you call them 100, 1800, bring me a shed, it's gonna be more money. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that that's a good. Uh, so I, I'm of the opinion that um, 90, my, it's my opinion that 90% of the stuff that comes forward through to the ZBA is going to get approved anyway. And to make our, our people in this town jump through all these hoops, I'm totally on board with deregulating, if you will, so, um, and making it cheaper. So... Um, Anything you can do, I'll support, and I'll help any way I can. Is this a change in the rules and regs? Do we have to do a public hearing for this? Yeah, uh, yes, you do, the rules and regulations amendments. And I'm, and I'm sorry, well, you, you mentioned state law that right. we, we have to be cognizant of. There are notification requirements in state law. On the butter side. Yes. Why, why does the planning board hold a public hearing? These things are before the ZBA. Isn't there rules and regulations that they have to adopt? Yes, it'd be ZBA. I was, there, there are a couple of instances of special permits by the planning board as well, though, too, like in multifamily units uh, like Spring Avenue. I wouldn't think you'd necessarily want to change that. Those S SPPs? Yes, SPPs. Yeah, because those wouldn't be small ones. They'd be more, more of the largest size ones. Yeah. So... The, uh, the other approach then as well is go to change the zoning bylaw to say that there's more de minimis projects to say that the 400-foot uh, deck is, not a, is a building permit and not a, a, a zoning entitlement. Deck cannot exceed the square footage of the structure. <laughs> <laughs> Enclosed and with a roof on it. Is, is there a way that we can, um, this is a great one for the Congress. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to push it, but if we, if we work together with the ZBA to say, let's go look at 12 months worth of, of low value uh, variance requests and just, you know, evaluate them. And say what were they decks and sheds and blah blah and what were the issues that needed to be worked around and the variants applied to and, and find out where the low hanging fruit is if you will and say what can we do for those people there and and looking at real life examples especially the if we had a hundred cases and thirty five of them were all the same we looked at those and said how can we change our zoning laws and our fee schedules and whatnot to help? Because the, they're going to get approved anyway, right? For the most part? For the most part. Yeah. So, uh, I mean... The, the, the Zoning Board of Appeals likes the idea that people are investing in their property and yeah. improving so, it. For the tax base. Yeah, most of It's too bad you can't give the commissioner or the building inspector the discretion to 
to make that call. So the same with conservation. There's a lot of calls that David should be able to make without... Administratively. Yeah, without clogging up agendas with... Is that re really? Can, do you think, is that legal? I, I would, I don't know. I don't know, but if there's, you know, if, it, if somebody wants to put an eight by 10 shed on their property and it, it you know, should be able to make that call just by a site visit to know. Sure. You know, the fence has been here for 40 years. We want to be 10 feet off of that. You know, I, I couldn't agree more, Charlie. That's Charlie. I'm sorry. <laughs> he agrees with you too, Charlie. I started thinking. <laughs> I know I, I couldn't agree more with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, but I we, don't know. Uh, are you going to draw the line on that though? Yeah. Yeah, that's a tough one. At a at a minimum lot size. I, I think you'd be better off to leave the variance issues in place and not try to play with that because <clears throat> there are a lot more things that come into play with the variance than there would be for simply reducing the fee. Let them go through the process if it's that important. So let me. I'll sign up to go get 12 months worth of variances and categorize them. You look at you're laughing at me, aren't you? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have them uh, scanned and digitized, so it'd be a little bit easier to go through the record. But I'll just now. make buckets, you know, and then we can look at them, and I'll help how I can. But I think what you're hearing from this board is that we're behind what you're trying to do. Is that, George? You agree, mm -hmm. Michael? You agree with that? Yeah. It's better to make it simpler for them to you know, add the structure or replace it have it be known so that it can be taxed accordingly rather than have it done under the cloak darkness. And found three years later when the assessment is redone. Right. Then we miss out on all that, that revenue for the sake of a hundred dollars worth of fees. Well, I, I, you know, I think there's another thing and that's the general improvement of a neighborhood as people start investing in their properties and uh, make their, uh, improve their property. It's, it builds up the whole neighborhood. Well, you're going to get that anyway. If somebody wants a new deck and they do it without a permit, they're still improving the property. They just aren't doing it. But only, only in the back where you can't see it. <laughs> it wasn't me. How about that? Is that better? <laughs> so, you need any more info on that? No, that's good. We'll start with uh, the review by Mr. Swenson. Can Soggy help me on that? You said you were going to do it. I mean, can she get me the data? Oh, yeah. Of I course. don't have to help. Did she get me the data? Yeah. All right. Uh, what's this uh, construction progress on Spring Avenue? What's I uh, wanted to give you an update because this was before the board in the last meeting on uh, the idea of using a covenant to... Uh, the road. For the... Uh, while the, the road was, was being worked on. But the, uh, the builder decided to move ahead with the improvement of the road first anyway, rather than using a covenant. Has it been inspected and so in the process? So as long as he's supervised and we know what he's putting out there, then good for him. I guess Dave Bernard asked if I would do the inspection, which I've been out there, I think, three times now um, and everything off so far is according to the plan mm -hmm. um, I told David that I would also give him a copy of my reports when I do them so he's got something on his record so, so far it's it's okay the next uh, inspection I'll make is when they get the rough grading done over the system that's out in the street get the connections done to the catch basins and begin to backfill it so that they can put the reprocess down in preparation for the mix. I don't have a specific date yet. Mm -hmm. This is, the, the difference is this is a public way, public right of way. So the, the town owns the improvements that are. Are they gonna make it before the winter weather gets cold, shall we? Yeah, their schedule is to put the binder down this fall and leave it just in the binder condition over the winter. That way they can run the trucks in over or whatever they have to do and if they break it up, it always can be repaired in the spring before you put the top on. So that's a normal thing to do. So they'll still be looking for some sort of surety then? Um, I don't know. But uh, less. A, not, lot, not, a lot less. There's, they get all yeah, the there's, there's nothing in your special permit that requires it, I don't believe. Well, it, it said that the, uh, I, would, 
I would think that it does actually have. It says it in the regulations that you can require it, but does it say it in the special permit that was granted? My interpretation of the conditions is yes. All right, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> um, in that case, when we get to that point, if they're looking, uh, have you been in touch with uh, our building inspector about that then so that he knows? Yes. Okay. Um, they won't issue a building permit with a new viewpoint building permit process. Uh, we get a uh, flag for the permit that's been issued to uh, load that up and and release the project to the uh, for a building permit. And, they, and uh, this is done with with all the different agencies and the departments that are they're connected. Okay, uh, are they aware of that uh, at Spring Street? The Sheridan Builders. Mm. I didn't uh, say anything to them because they, they went ahead with the construction, so I assumed that they would want to finish it before they get a building permit, but they may not. So well, that's what they were told, that they had to finish it, the uh, road before they got a building permit unless they put up the bond. And so they're aware of the possibility that they will need a bond if they don't finish the top course before spring? Correct. Okay. All right. So I can, next time I go out, I can just remind them of that so yep. that they're aware of it? So, all right. I want to talk about town meeting. Cool. Town meeting is next Monday. There are a few articles on the uh, on the docket. Did you want to meet before the town meeting? <coughs> if you're going to attend, why would you miss it? I know it's great theater. It is. <laughs> yeah. It's like watching paint dry. Remember that rake I mentioned earlier? <laughs> um, yeah, I gotta go find my notes now. <laughs> I'm sure you have. You can. Uh, you want a little explanation right up and uh, yeah. announcement of the uh, public hearing. Yeah, I'm trying to think of which ones we had criticism about. I don't think they made it on the, the warrant, right? The uh, the change in the marijuana thing didn't make it on. Didn't the make it, no. So don't have to discuss that. Mm. I'll look them over and see where we're we at. We only had two, right? From the planning board? The, the landscape buffers and the moratorium? We only had two originated by the planning board. The moratorium on social marijuana and landscape buffers. And and the, uh, the overlay district list and the... Uh, I thought the overlay district list was coming from the Board of Selectmen. I don't, I mean, I, I. But it's still a zoning article, and you have to, as the planning board, take the responsibility for saying that you've held a public hearing. Oh, oh. In accordance with the state law and made, and making the recommendations yeah. to the town meeting. Sorry, I was off, I was off there. Well, George has been through this before, so I know that. We did have public hearings on, on all those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The only uh, change would be uh, giving a little more input about the public hearing, if anyone objected, what was the objections and stuff like that. I know I wrote it down, but I think most of that got thrown out when we voted not to bring them forward. <laughs> Okay, notes. are you good there? Yep. So, from a point of, just from a procedural point of view though, when the two, um, when the social, the social marijuana moratorium article comes up, who, who's going to introduce that and explain it? Is that you? Typically, George takes that. I, I will do it if it's appropriate, but. Or, Did we bring that, we sponsoring that? Yeah, I think we were. Right? Yeah, one of us will. And and we're sponsoring the landscape buffer one as well, mm -hmm. right? I mean, so. Um, given my luck with lotteries, it'll be the 
next to last and last out of the church. Probably so. <laughs> um, I updated the landscape buffer diagram uh, that with Michael's comments. I will make sure that Matt Underhill has it. He's a guy running the projector. So when that when that comes up, when that article comes up, he'll throw that diagram up that I sh shared last meeting, and you can you can walk through it if you want, or can, or I will, or whoever you want to do it. The moratorium one, I don't think we need anything on. But we're also sponsoring one on the towing change, right? Yeah, that's that's ours. That's right. that's pretty self-explanatory. The one I think yeah, it's that's good. a good way to go. <laughs> but the the one that's going the one I've talked to Ken about this already. The one that's going to catch us is the the Tremont Nail Overlay District. The update where we're just adding that summary uh, paragraph to section 200 because it was left out. I mean, this board when when we first saw it, I know people got excited and said, "Hey, may, we, maybe we can do something here." And it really was just an administrative change. I guarantee you we're going to get a floor amendment to do something. And um, if and that would be something that probably Claire would hold as out of context and not allow because it is an administrative change. And she's not going to allow a floor amendment to come in and, and do something around Tremont Nail Overlay District that has nothing to do with the article itself. Right. So and that would be made would be making a major change at the yeah point. changing the scope of the article yeah so i i think um whoever's sponsoring that has i strongly suggest if it's us great but there, we've got to lead loud and clear this is not in any manner shape or form an article that changes the rules and regulations of the Tremont nail overlay district it, it's just an administrative change because we left out a paragraph in section 200 when we did the town law update and otherwise it's otherwise this is going right down a rat hole so i can say that this they can still do whatever they damn well please in the tremont nail overlay district. yeah pretty much <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah just call peter up and he'll tell you what you can and can't do <laughs> what, he, what he wants to do right yeah still waiting for that distillery i haven't seen it so who, who's going to who's going to be sponsoring that one? Do you know? No, I don't know. Sometimes like that, something like that, the uh, the FinCom will just make a motion. So it depends. I, a lot of times they make the motion. And I don't know what their rhyme or reason to is when they do and when they don't. That's a zoning change. Why wouldn't you make a report on that, George? I will make a report because we hold a public hearing on it. But. Maybe you but can as just. As far as making the motion, it usually. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to make it easy, uh, and stay out of stay out of trouble. That'd be a first too. So. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, can you? I'll talk with you. We'll find out who's going to be, quote, presenting that, because I'd like to talk to them, and yeah. and, and volunteer to help. So. All right. I think we're done, aren't we? Can I ask a question about the plan that was submitted tonight or you saw from Old Stagecoach Road? Sure. Is that a new Form A? Yes. A refiling? Yes. So you've got to make a decision within 21 days of tonight. Mm -hmm. Correct. What date would that be? <coughs> November 4th, uh, we could have that. Yeah, I think that was the, I thought 4th was our workshop. Well, but no, it's going to be, no, be also the an A&R as well. If they don't withdraw it, we will have to have a special meeting or just let it constructively be approved if you don't want to vote on it. You don't want to do that. The one thing that I'm puzzled by is they still have two structures on one lot. What's he going to do with it? It's granted by the Board of Appeals. Yeah, it's done in relief on that. But <laughs> what's he going to do with that? Here we go. <laughs> You get your question answered. <laughs> yeah, that's a good. That's a good My question. How do you sell one lot to two, two homeowners? Well, turn it into another Nicholas Drive. Yeah. Can make a motion to adjourn. Seconded. Motion.
motion has been made by Richard, seconded by Mike King. Shall we call Emmanuel and tell him we'll get note at 10 past 8? <laughs> <laughs> it's only hey, 4 a.m. hasn't started yet. Good. <laughs> tell him we'll st we stayed up All late. in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Let's see. Meeting adjourned at 8.12. That's a